Hey everyone, and welcome back to the uh, Monday afternoon skill building Monday drawing group. I'm your host, Jason Leeser, and uh, thank you for joining us today. It is Monday, March 25th. It is noon. And if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments and in the chats, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. And welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams, real world events, to share and inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. With your help, uh, we have evolved into a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo and art shows that have all been receiving rave reviews. You can find Reinventing the Tattoo in both of the app stores, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, as well as our Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel, our Reinventing the Tattoo Roku channel, which has 12 to 15 different episodes going at any given time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as well as all of the major podcast directories such as Apple and Spotify. Or you can do what most people do and just pull up your browser and do a quick search for Reinventing the Tattoo. And you'll find it all except for the book, which is still currently out of print. So if you come across a copy, please let me know. I'm still trying to get my hands on another copy because uh, they're kind of hard to find these days. But no matter, no matter where you were watching live or on demand, you can always get the latest and greatest, most up-to-date information all available at www.reinventingthetattoo.com. You can try it out for free. Uh, we have three different options that you can use to try it out. You can get a sample webinar from the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon, or you can get some free advice from Guy Aitchison about your unique goals, or you can take a comprehensive tattoo history course from Jay Brown. Fellow tattoo history nerds such as myself would absolutely love the tattoo history course. I cannot stress it enough. It's awesome. At reinventingthetattoo.com, you can also find a full event schedule with full weekly and special event live stream details. So if you wanted to jump into a show like this one, all of those links are listed in the calendar at reinventingthetattoo.com. While there, you also have access to our Reinventing 24-7 channel, which is a lot like our Roku channel. It's got 13 different episodes going at any given time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week and that is accessible on all web-enabled devices. As well, at reinventingthetattoo.com, you can also find access to professional development courses and on-demand seminars from over 20 world-class tattoo artists. So if you wanted to learn how to tattoo a skull like Bob Tyrell, you can find it there. If you wanted to learn how to do a koi fish half sleeve like Andre Malcolm, you can find that there as well. That and a whole lot more can all be found at www.reinventingthetattoo.com. Once again, if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments and in the chat, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. We have a number of weekly staple shows we always encourage people to tune into. Starting off on Mondays at 9 a.m., we have Drawing Four Tattooers with James Wisdom. A uh, great place to go uh, where we can all get back to our fundamentals of being fine artists in this world of tattooing that we live in. It's a great way to go through and kind of dial back in some of those core elements that really allow us to shine through and help us to refine our own style. Following the Drawing Four Tattooers with James Wisdom show at 9 a.m. on Mondays, you have this show, Skill Building Monday Drawing Group, with me, Jason Leeser. And this is hosted every Monday at noon. It's a great place to come through to take a look and share what you've been working on. Maybe if you're looking for a critique or some feedback on a tattoo or a drawing or a painting, uh, maybe you're here to work on some procreate skills or trying to really figure out some stuff that's going to help you take everything to another level, but you really want to find a place to drill down on it. This, this is the perfect place to go. Uh, following Skill Building Monday drawing group at 9 p.m. on Mondays, we have a subscribers exclusive drawing group with Sandy McAndrew from the Reinventing the Tattoo Network, uh, where we get to go through and do some follow up practices every week uh, on a chapter from the Reinventing the Tattoo canon. For those of you that are out there that are wondering whether or not getting a canon or an evolution subscription is going to be worth it, 
from personal experience, these Monday evening drawing groups are well worth the price alone. Uh, They're absolutely incredible, and I cannot stress that enough. If you look at the stuff I was doing before I started doing those and the stuff I'm doing now, there is a monumental difference. Following all of that, on Tuesday at 11 a.m., we have the Tattoo Weekly Show with Gabe Ripley, Lauren Gregory, and Fawn Baker. Um, and that's a great place to go to keep up to date on all of the new information going on in the industry, whether it's uh, legislation being passed or bills or how that's going to impact different things, or maybe it's new technology. All of that and more comes through during the Tattoo Weekly at 11 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. On Wednesday mornings at noon, we have the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley, where we get to go through and do a deeper dive into the business aspect behind tattooing. Maybe it's marketing, maybe it's uh, advertising, maybe it's talking about travel visas, maybe it's you know trying to streamline your client booking process. All of that and a lot more is discussed during the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley. That's Wednesdays at noon. And capping off our week on Thursdays at 6 p.m., we have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast with Fawn Baker. Great place for us to go through and share some of our stories and adventures on our road to on our road as we go through and collect tattoos from different people. Um, following all of our virtual events, we have a special event coming up May 17th through 19th. Reinventing the Tattoo will be live from Columbus, Ohio at the Hell City Tattoo Convention. Oh, yeah. We've got special guest artists at Hell City that include, but are not limited to, Paul Booth, Derb Morrison, Joe Capobianco, Jimmy Litwalk, Nico Perez, Ty McEwen, James Vaughn, Jesse Levitt, Ron Earhart, Marshall Bennett, and of course, Yours truly, who will be working alongside my good friend, Seth Mushrush. Um, and there are going to be a ton of incredible, absolutely, unbelievably talented artists at Hell City. That is May 17th through 19th in Columbus, Ohio. Following that, Reinventing the Tattoo also has another live event coming up. June 23rd through 25th, Reinventing the Tattoo will be live in Columbus, Ohio again. Uh, at a special live event hosted at the Red Tree Gallery, and that is going to be co-hosted by Rember and Rember Studios, and it is going to be awesome. So if you're looking for great seminars to attend and you can't make it to Hell City, take a look at the Reinventing the Tattoo live event coming up June 23rd through 25th. would like to go through and say a very quick thank you and shout out to our sponsors. First is worldtattooevents.com, the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. They are constantly keeping everything updated. As we know, tattoo uh, events and conventions are still getting rescheduled in this post-pandemic era. So if you're looking for the most up-to-date tattoo event information coming to a city or town near you, or maybe it's one you want to visit, it's how I plan all my vacations, take a look at worldtattooevents.com. Also would like to say thank you to TattooNow.com, technology for tattooers, the leading edge in professional development, management, and digital tools for tattooers of all levels. They're 100% competitive with any type of CRM mailing list or scheduling software out there. So if you're, oh, looks like I just lost my video. One second, folks. Hold on. There we go. That should bring us back up. And this is technology for you. I love it. Uh, it's been one of those weeks so far. Um, so if you're looking to bring in more clients uh, to help you, um, if you're looking to get more people to come through the door that really want to get the kind of work that you really want to do, take a look at TattooNow.com. would also like to thank Guy Aitchison over at GuyAitchison.com. He is the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo. Uh, go to GuyHson.com where you can pick up a copy of his Biomech Encyclopedia. He's got some awesome tutorial DVDs. Uh, I think he still has a couple of custom coil machines for sale, as well as countless fine art prints and the occasional oil painting, all for sale at GuyHson.com. Would also like to say a very special thank you and shout out to the Apprenticeship Diaries with Amy Nichols, 
one of the best resources for people that are thinking about becoming a tattoo apprentice and want to know more about what's involved. Uh, take a look at the Apprenticeship Diaries podcast hosted by Amy Nichols. We ask if you like today's show, please go through and post a positive review on the channel. Help us get the word out. If you would like to host a Reinventing the Tattoo event, become a sponsor of our community, or if you are looking for a fine art or a tattoo critique, you can always email management at reinventingthetattoo.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Today on our show, we've got a very, very special guest, um, someone that I've had the uh, pleasure and privilege of going through and learning from in the past few years. We've got Haley Adams beaming in all the way from San Francisco. What's up? What's up? How are you? It's nice to see you again. Likewise, likewise. I can't thank you enough for doing that, uh, the Space and Galaxy seminar that you did. I still have my uh, my little gift bag filled with everything, including the little green space stuff, the coloring the markers, the pencils. I still have all of that. That's like tucked That's away awesome. in my special little safe area. Um, you know, cause like, I don't know, you're awesome. And I learned a lot from it. So thank you for that. I really, really appreciated it. Um, and it taught me a lot too, because I've done a couple of galaxy sleeves since then. And a lot of that information was perfect. Yeah. Oh, I want to see them. Yeah, send them to me. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will. That's awesome. I'll send you a text after this. And um, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll have you go through and critique me. Um, I only have like 12 hours into like the upper arm. So I still have a little bit more spit and polish to put into it. But, uh, you know, it's at a decent point so far. So I'm very excited for that. So. Thank you for that. You, Thank you for the do offer. Do you do like sections at a time or do you, are you a person who does <coughs> like a certain order? Um, so it kind of depends on what the client's budget is, in my opinion. Like I'll yeah. work small sections at a time if they're working with a smaller budget and it's like, all right, cool. We'll do yeah. a planet here. Oh, okay. You've got a little bit of a bigger budget. Cool. Let's throw a galaxy here because that's going to take a little bit more time. Um, if they've yeah, got, so you don't leave nice... them hanging with like exactly. some outline and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. Smart. I mean, I prefer to go through and kind of map everything out with gray lines first and then go back through. And it's like, cool, you're a coloring book. Now we can work on your time and your dime. You want to come in and get three or four hours done. Great. You want to come in and get a full day booked. Awesome. Whatever you can afford after that is, you know, what we can work on. Uh, so it kind of breaks things up nicely as far as that goes, but it all, like I said, it all depends on the client budget. So, yeah, uh, but sense. I do have some questions for you. Um, this okay. is my first time actually interviewing you. Oh, this is hi there. real nice. He just likes to hang out while I draw. Oh, that. Oh, guy. so cute. So cute. <laughs> He's my uh, roommate. <laughs> right on, right on. Um, so I, I do have some interview questions, uh, knowing that you've been interviewed by plenty of different news outlets and had articles written about you in different places. Um, you know, this is my first time actually getting to like interview you in that I, kind of a depth. Um, I'm so excited. I'm very excited. You, it's, less than, um, it's like, I feel like I know you, so I'm not like nervous I, you know? like, exactly <laughs> right i mean when you've shared a, a handful of cocktails at a bar at 11 o'clock at night up in jiminy peak you you get to know people pretty well the truth comes <laughs> out, you know? yeah totally those were some good times um but tell us a little bit about yourself um you know what's your background where do you come from i know you've gone from like coast to coast uh yeah. on your tattoo journey um you know, just uh, give us a little bit of background history about yourself uh, so that we okay. know a little bit more about you. So I'm I'm from all over. My family moved from state to state a lot, but um, I started my apprenticeship whenever I was 15 in Missouri. And um, then whenever I was 17, I packed up and moved to North Carolina because um, I had lived there before, you know, <laughs> and I was like, maybe that'll, you know, be nice. Um, 
And then in North Carolina, I met some cool people and started really like growing my color work and tattoo work and stuff. And I had the dream of moving to San Francisco and owning a shop in San Francisco. And that was like the whole goal uh, for from then on, right? And so I moved to Phoenix to get closer to California. And then once I thought that my work was like hireable in San Francisco, I tested it out with like, you know, some shops. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm ready. I can go there now. So now I own a shop in San Francisco and I'm about to hit 19 years of tattooing. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. That's um that's not an easy task to accomplish. Um, no, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say I think I maybe have 15 years in. I think actually I think I'm going to hit 15 years this September. That's um, awesome. I, I have to math that and like, you know, yeah. do do the thing with numbers and I'm not very good at that. Um but you know, it's it's one of those situations where like, you know, you lose track of time after a while, but I've seen artists come and go and I've seen some of them leave and, you know, maybe revisit it, you know, five, 10 years later. Uh, my one friend, Bob, I don't know if he's watching today. He tunes in sometimes. Um, you know, I saw him, he was like, he had just finished up like a, an apprenticeship and um, the studio he was at, you know, kind of folded. So he opened up his own one and then there were complications with that. So he closed that down. And then, you know, he gave me a call one day and he's like, yeah, so I'm not going to be around for a little while. I'm going to go on a walkabout um, and just kind of <laughs> see the world. And I was like, uh, all right, dude, be safe. Um, have fun. And I'm I didn't hear from him. that a lot lately. Like yeah. um, since it's one of the slowest seasons we've seen in like a decade, um, mm -hmm. I'm hearing a lot more tattoo artists being like, oh, I think I'm going to get a second job or um, like just like putting their energy towards a different career. And I mean, yeah, I mean, we got a weird slow season this last year, so I don't blame them. But it is there's been multiple times in my career where it's like, all right, you got to stick it out. Who's going to buy the $5 little Caesar pizza. We're all going to arm wrestle for it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's worth it. Like, cause it just goes up and down and whatever you're along for, you know, <laughs> right. You get to say it the best job ever. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's, can you stick it out? Can you see it through the tough times, you know? And yeah. if you can, then you get to reap the rewards. If you can't, then by all means, go pick up that second job and make that, you know, everything that you wanted to do. But you're right. This past year has been really, really rough. Um, yeah. You know, some people say it's the worst it's been in, you know, 10 years. Some say 15. Some for some people, it's the worst that they've ever seen. Um, yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, they were used to that. Uh, the previous 10 years, you know, that first few it years after doom, that recession right? started coming out, you know, after like 2008, 2009, that recession kind of lifted off and people started to gain momentum, making more money and, you know, everything was, was going huge. great. Yeah. And, you know, so that's what people knew. And now they're like, what is this? What it, what I'm like, I remember this 10 years ago, whenever you'd go to work and you'd be like, I hope I make the gas money to get back home. You know, I'm like, it's fine. Like, I mean, but I mean, I'm also not struggling as hard as them. Like my books just went down from like a year to six months booked. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I'm still booked through slow season. So I, I don't have the right to talk about it too much, but I know that it's fucking hard and I've been there before. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not fun, but you know what? That's okay. You know, I, the way I look at it, I don't believe in a slow season. I believe that there's painting season and then there's tattoo <laughs> season. Right? There absolutely is painting season. You know, because you can always take those paintings and sell those later on if you need to as a source of income and, you we know, uh, or make prints so. or make prints, you know, making yeah. prints has become a huge secondary market. Um. I started to get into that and I started making prints for a couple of people back during the pandemic. And it's awesome. 
Um, it takes a bit more work than a lot of people think. You mean like screen for, printing prints? Or? No, like uh, fine art, uh, Gleasy prints. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so is that real what you're teaching art. a seminar in? Uh, it is. It Ooh, is. I did it last year. And I got a handful of people there. I plan on doing it again this year. And actually, if I can fit it in my Jeep, I want to bring my printer and like a roll of paper up there um, <laughs> to actually run stuff off while things are going. Um, I want to bring just my hope. drawings. Yeah, let me know. I'll bring a <laughs> scanner too, and we can scan it and run prints. Right How there on scanner? the spot. <laughs> uh, 11 by 17. Nice. Yeah. I specifically got it just so that I could scan flash sheets, um, you know, and make copies of those without having to, like, tile those together. But anything bigger than that, and it's like, ugh, all right, where's my digital camera? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then I got to, like, stitch it all together and make sure that the lighting's right for the color correction. But that's a different story. Um, so back to, you know, some of these interview questions, you and I can talk for like hours about nothing. So I'm yeah, exactly. trying to stay, they'll be less entertained, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is though. It's what makes for a good interview is having that kind of personal connection. I like it. Um, so if you had to pick like one single event or like inspiring moment, something like that, that really made you turn around and say, this is what I want to do for a living. I want to be a tattoo artist. This this is the only thing I can do to be happy. What would that be? So, uh, this is ridiculous. But um, whenever I was around seven years old, my older sisters came home with tattoos. I think they were like, they must have been like 14 and 15. And um, I wasn't allowed to tell my mom you know, and they showed me in secret and was like, yeah, somebody did this to me. They like colored on me. It's going to be there forever. And I was like, it's going to be there forever. You know, like, <laughs> and um, literally from then on is whenever I'm like, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. I'm going to be a tattoo artist. And like, it, at first it's just something you say. And then I was like practicing as a little kid drawing barbed wire a lot. Um, Unfortunately, barbed wire, barbed wire went out of style and I didn't get to like actually tattoo it for years, but I got so good at it. Um, but the drawing was already an addiction for me. And then once I actually got into tattooing, it felt right. And I can't, I can't say I've ever wavered from it. I've been obsessed with it. And like, how do I get better for the entire past 19 years? Like, it's incredible. I'm so I'm so glad I figured it out early. People don't figure out their careers very early and spend a lot of time lost. Um, I'm so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm in I'm in the same kind of boat. You know, became obsessed with it when I was a teen, and it's like that's I've geared my entire life towards it. You know, it's this yeah. like, compulsion that we have to like do this. You know. Um, uh, one artist I was speaking to a while back said that it's more like a calling, you know, um, there are people out there that get called to become a firefighter, right? Yeah. It's just this deep seated internal like drive to achieve this and to become this. And it's the only way they can really feel, feel fulfilled in life. Um, and so I've, I've, when they said that to me, it kind of rang true. And I was like, oh, man, that's that hits the nail on the head. I think it's um, an addiction. Oh, absolutely. You're like, absolutely. oh, yeah, I can do I can do better than that. And I, I feel like I I say that to myself every time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, All right. That was all right. That was all right. Like, let's, I, I want to I'm going to step it up a notch. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. every fucking tattoo. And you're like, what? Like, it'll never end. You can't actually achieve being the best in the world. It's like, because it's also subjective. Like, right. you know, what does that even mean, the best in the world? So there's there's no ceiling. You just get to keep going. It's kind of messed up. But. <laughs> it is. It, I like that. Because, <laughs> you know, it's it. like, you know, it's like when you set your goals so high that you know you won't ever be able to achieve it. 
but you're still going to try your absolute hardest to get there. You just keep climbing. You get, yeah, halfway you is just pretty keep fucking going. good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's awesome, but you're right. You know, it's like, that's why we do what we do. It's, it's that constant drive. I also love that feeling you get when you have a client that, you know, you did a tattoo on them and you thought it turned out all right. Um, you know, maybe you could do a little bit better, but then you see them like a year or two down the road with everything fully healed. And you're like, wait, I did that. I yeah. Did that. Sometimes. Where'd you go to get that touched up? Like who, who did that? That like, wasn't that me. Like sick. Cause you, yeah. there's a lot of like self-hatred in tattooing and we focus a lot on like criticizing ourselves really harshly. Right. Um, so it is like, once you do have distance from a piece, then it does feel a lot better. Like yeah. to see it again years later and you're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn, that, that turned out great. Like, what was I doing? Hate myself that whole time. That shit's sick. I want one. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. And it's like, man, I wish that was on me. Yeah, I do that sometimes whenever it's like the outer space stuff or like uh, the organic biomech that I do. I'm like, can you just cut off your skin and tape it to me? Not in a weird way, but like. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yeah, not trying to be weird here, but I want your skin. Yeah, you can have mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, who would you say some of your biggest influences in this industry are or inspirations or, um, you know, people that you really kind of look up to and, you know, people that you really try to like, okay, this is someone I kind of, I really want to achieve that kind of a level one day. Um, I, whether fine art or tattooer, doesn't matter. Yeah. Down well, for okay. Guy Aitchison obviously has this aspect that I'm really into, which is like being really into like the education side of tattooing. Um, like I love going to seminars and I love teaching seminars and I relate to him in the way of like, sometimes he like, is just experimenting with something and then uh, maybe he'll show us, you know, like, Oh, well now I'm building like clay models of biomech and that way I can get the lighting just right. You know, I feel this, like I'm the same type of nerd. <laughs> so like that would like just dive into like weird shit. Or I think he did that thing. It was a long time ago where comparing like, I think it was like a rotary machine and a tattoo machine and just like, looking at it under a microscope and seeing the consistency or something. I'm like, I love that shit, <laughs> you know? Um, I like it when the lighting is perfect and stuff like that. So um, I think he is really cool. And I'm not just saying that because he created reinventing the tattoo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but whenever, also I used to be, well, I think it was about, I was about 15, 16 and I saw, um, Nick Baxter's meat suitcase, the like piece of steak with the papers coming out. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like this guy, this guy gets it. Um, so I really like um, just not your typical tattooing, you know. Um, I have a steak from Nick Baxter now because I'm like, yo, you're marbling on that steak. With <laughs> it changed my life. <laughs> Uh, and mine is like a steak in a terrarium. So there's like, uh, to make it look like glass, you know, I watch him like mix a little bit of like light gray with every color that was behind the glass and everything that was out of the glass was, um, you know, your straightforward colors or mixed colors. Um, but I, I really like the way he tattoos and Ty McEwen. Um, yeah. I was tattoo artist. And then like illustrators, I'm like, you know, Ken Kelly is the shit. I love his water. <laughs> yeah. And he apprenticed under Frizetta. And I'm like, yeah, Frizetta is sick. But like, have you seen King Kelly's water? Like, <laughs> Right, right. They're both very cool. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, so I was at the show I was just at this past weekend. There were, there was someone there that ran like an oddities booth. And they had a whole bunch of these really super dope frames with a lot of the Frizetta prints in them. Um and I remember one of my clients, I'm going to see if I can 
reach back out to them. I haven't seen them in a few years, but I want to reach back out to them um, because there's apparently a whole museum on the East Coast dedicated to that artwork, like done by him. Whoa. So um, I have to find some more about it, but apparently they knew someone that was like the child or the a relative of Frenzetta and has a lot of originals at their house. Whoa, and they just like let people see this Frenzetta shit. That's fucking sick. Yeah. So I would go uh, to that any day. Yeah. I like so, that oh. he used his wife as a model like all the time. Oh I yeah. I it's so fucking cute and um I like the way he draws women. Like he keeps yeah. like the curbs on them and stuff like this. Uh, it's so it's like makes like for like a hotter woman, I think. But <laughs> like, like oh, it's like like real, you know? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like, like wow, this is like an actual. The boobs human. are so yeah. shiny and whatever. It just doesn't do that. It's cool. Yeah. It's like and she looks kind of fucking tough. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a super tough chick? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I feel you. I just watched this so. new movie called Love Lies Bleeding, and it's uh, like Kristen Stewart in love with like a bodybuilder, and then they, you know, kill people and shit. Hot muscle babe, super sick. <laughs> and she's <laughs> like femme, you know, she's like more femme. Um, and she's like ripped. Um, it was so cool. Y'all should see it. <laughs> Especially like on the ver if you're we're talking about like heavy metal magazine and Frazetta oh, yeah. and King Kelly, yo, muscle babes, that's where it started, you know. <laughs> we need to bring that back. We need that to bring shit's it back. so cool. Fuck. I have like every heavy heavy metal on this with like a I was looking at that behind you, yeah. Oh my god, look at this one. I'll put it under the drawing one. Oh. So sick. Is that that's so a Vallejo. Buff. Is that Vallejo cover art? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, it says it's Boris. Boris. Boris Vallejo, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so sick. Hell, yeah. Her, like, veins are, like, popping out and shit. I'm like, and she's a total fucking babe. Like, <laughs> let's bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> We're bringing it back. All right. It's official. We're bringing it back. We're bringing back exactly. muscle babes. 10 out of 10. <laughs> So knowing that you're you're working with uh, markers right now, yeah, right, um, and that flash sheet, by the way, and let me see if I can spotlight this, this real quick. I'm just gonna switch that out there. That is super let sick. Let me try to move it into the. Would you say oh, that yeah. markers are your primary medium outside of like tattooing, um, uh, or is you know, that your I've... preferred medium? I wouldn't. I wouldn't exactly say that. I would say that marker is what I use whenever I want to get an idea out fast. And okay. acrylic is what I use whenever I want like a sharp image with a lot of detail. And then oil is what I use whenever I want something to be like kind of more dreamy. Like if I'm doing like a portrait or something like that, uh, because okay. oil has that texture. Right. Um, yeah. So I like them all. I like watercolor too, and that's only, um, I don't know, whenever I feel like inspired to do it, but I can do some realistic watercolor, which is weird. I'm like, I like oil better for skin. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm always curious about that because, you know, especially with different artists, you can start to kind of see a translation between like the way that they work with secondary mediums. And I say secondary only because I consider a lot of the artists that I interview on here to be tattooers first, you know, oh, yeah. as like I agree with that. Medium. We do that way more, um, you know, because that's why we're on here. That's what we're talking about. That's why it's not an acrylic painting, uh, you know, podcast. It's a tattoo focused podcast. So yeah. outside of that, I can, uh, but if you look at, all of these other artists work. Um, you can see who diversifies. You can see who's like, I'm an oil painter. That's what I do. Here's my oil paintings. And my tattoos look exactly like my oil paintings. And it works great. Um, you can see the same thing with people that do marker renderings. Right? Uh, Dave Tevenaugh is a perfect example of that. Um, 
you know, he brought some of the Prisma and Copic marker renderings really to the forefront about 10 years ago. And it took off um, very graphic illustration kind of stuff. And Damn, you I can see, see that. Because I'm like all obsessed. Oh, it, he is ridiculously fast when it comes to marker renderings. Yeah, markers Ridiculous. are speedy. Um, yeah. but they act, they don't have like very good light fastness. So your drawing That's... does not last forever, but you make a print of it, you know, if you want to keep it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll um yeah maybe after time, this you know? I'll I'll break out some of the originals I have from Dave, and um, I'll send you some shit. photos of them. Uh, yeah, but, I love I mean, marker shit. This shit is so fun. <laughs> yeah, he built out a thirteen by nineteen marker rendering in like two three hours, Hell like yeah. start to finish, and watching him do that, and I I have been very fortunate to watch him work on a work of art from start to finish before in person. And it is mind blowing how, just the way his mind works, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, and we're just going to like scribble some of this in here and then we're going to do some of this over here and then we're going to use this over here. And you want to see a drop shadow real quick? Check this out. Boom, boom, boom. Done. And um, you step back and you look at it and you're like, I know I just watched him make that, but how did he, make <laughs> that? you know, so it's fascinating to watch people work with that. And just working in different mediums too, you know, um, for example, the flash sheet that you have up there that you've been working on, you know, I looking at that, I feel like it could be done in watercolor or liquid acrylics or marker, or it could be done in any number of different mediums. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's super versatile imagery, but knowing that you used marker with it, it's like, oh man, that's, that's tight. Getting it's all that little texture in there. Yeah, because they, I feel like color pencil and marker are the most similar to tattooing because you can only layer so much and things are very visible when you do it. Like the colors aren't super opaque, you know. We have opaque right. colors in tattooing, but you, there you can't really go over them. You're, you have to like blend, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. It gets cool. me in that groove. Oh, absolutely. Um, so back to my interview questions. Um, have you noticed any kind of a correlation between the paintings and drawings that you do and the tattoos that you create? Have you like done any kind of self-analysis in that aspect? I swear to God, with every painting or um extensive marker drawing i do my tattooing grows i think it just solidifies something in your head and it, there's something about having the freedom to like work something out on paper or on canvas like full color all the way through full detail you know um you can figure a lot more out because i'm going to take less risks in a tattoo and in a painting i can take the risks and i can like figure it all out. And then after you figure it out, you're like, Oh, well, psh, I'm going to tattoo that tomorrow, you know? <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely a correlation. I don't, I definitely wouldn't even know what the fuck I'm doing unless I was drawing and painting. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So how would you, how would you like categorize the style of tattoos that you do? Cause I know you're extremely diverse. You do a lot of awesome stuff. Um, you do a lot of great color work. You do a lot of like space fantasy art. Um, yeah. you do a lot of nice biomac. Like, is there, would you say that you're like one specific style or are you really trying to just keep things diverse? I think that it is, for me, it is all the same stuff in a way. Um, Cause I see it as like this fantasy color thing. Um, even like the underwater stuff feels like kind of fantasy to me. Like anything that has like a lot of texture, you can fuck with like lighting and reflections is what I love. I like, yeah, texture and weird lighting. So I'm like across the board, texture and weird lighting wins, you know, like in the outer space seminar where I'm like, yo, 
You ever do rocks before? Fucking love tattooing. <laughs> and I'm you like, said I those to exact the words and it changed my yeah. life. It's like, the yeah, that's cool. And the little but details. have you ever done a space rock? That's the shit. Like, and then like they get blurry. Like, and and then they spread out. Man, space rocks. Try it sometime. No. <laughs> so I think yeah. everything I do is focused around that. Like, what's the texture? What's the lighting? Um, and to me, it's like very, all very the same. But then if you like look at it, you're like, I don't know, you're doing space over here in a fucking chrome gooey space. I don't know. What is that? You know, <laughs> yeah. so many octopuses. I do so many octopuses. Yeah. And I love that shit. Like, I'm like, let me put the texture. All that in tight here. little texture in the skin and the supplement. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like learning to trying to figure out how to do it with like the best contrast, um, you know, for because you know there's the bold will hold, and I'm like I disagree because I'm not gonna do big ass outlines. I do do outlines on my stuff, but like chunks of black is gonna hold better than your thin ass outline. Check out my yeah. contrast, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, it's so that's actually something that. Um, you know, I was, my perspective on it shifted a while back. Um, while I do agree with, you know, the outline theory of things, yeah, totally. right. Um, and I use air quotes there because, um, you know, that's what they are referred to as if yeah. instead of looking at them as outlines, if instead you look at them as just small shapes, Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you start to like formulate this different concept in your head because then you're like, okay, well, if it's just a shape, why can't that shape just blend into other shapes? Right. And now you've created an edge instead of a line and yeah. that'll give you the same thing as a hard outline. The difference is, you're not going to see a hard outline. You're just going to see an edge. Yeah. And then people will be like, wait, did you outline that? And you're like, well, technically it's outlined, I mean, but it's like this trick of the eye, right? Like where yeah. all the black is blended into shadows and stuff. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's, it's just a different way of looking at the same thing, you know? Yeah. So if you could pick one thing or event that you would say had the biggest impact on the type and style of art that you do. Ooh, the type and style. Man, it's Ty or it's uh, Nick Baxter seeing him in yeah. the tattoo magazine with his, you know, stupid little meat suitcase. <laughs> also Paul Booth with like, he had this flesh that had a chopped off pinky wearing a tutu. And I was like, anything's possible. Anything. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, those motherfuckers with their like, like, okay, it's not so serious, you know? Right. It's like, I mean, it wasn't super serious before. I mean, wizards and fairies were pretty tight back then. But those exist. Um, yeah. <laughs> but a chopped off pinky wearing a tutu. I mean, oh, it's a weird motherfucker. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. But that's from like way back. I, I must have been 15 on that magazine or um, that group. My, uh, the guy who taught me would just like flip through tattoos he had saved. You know how everyone back then had files? Oh, yeah. Of references and they weren't in a computer. Okay. No, well, it was a big filing great. cabinet and you would pull out yeah. and flip through. Looking for like a uh, lighthouse, 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 lighthouse. Light. Here's the lighthouse. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And so he had like kind of that system, um, but he had a. It was like a like a either a CD, like a burned CD, or like a floppy that he had saved and scanned and took pictures of anytime he saw one of his favorite tattoos in a magazine or um, in person or something, and he would um flip through like it was like 200 images and just like tell me who the artist was and what's going on and stuff and i was like oh sick you know <laughs> so that's where i saw like paul booth and then uh i saw nick baxter's and like i just got a magazine one day and was like 
what is he doing? I want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of younger tattooers won't quite know the the adrenaline rush that you would get when you used to go to like the bookstores or the magazine shops and like they had a new issue out of like international tattoo art or uh, you know tattoo magazine or tattoo society just dropped a new issue and you go over and you're like you pick it up and you're like oh man this is going to be a good one and you just start flipping through right there like, oh, that's sick. Also, that's the dream sick. of being in those magazines, like yeah. the worst. I mean, no shade to those magazines. But like the this quality is so early 2000s, 90s, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're like, oh, man, if only I could get a picture published. And I remember like sending off like, I don't know, like my first dog portrait and just being like sending him to the magazines. I'm like, oh, I... I hope they'll tell me if they do publish it, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that was like, that was how you knew you kind of made it, right? If yeah. You, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you got interviewed, Same. you had a dedicated article in a tattoo magazine. You were, oh, you were there, God. man. Senior you were God. famous. You could do anything. It's like, oh, really? Well, how many times have you been published? Oh, oh. Yeah, you haven't. I don't even yet. think Nick Baxter had, that was young Nick Baxter. He, he didn't yeah. even have like an interview or anything. He was just like something he sent in. And I was mm -hmm. like. But they, I, I think I remember seeing one specific magazine. They gave him like an entire half a page of oh, just yeah. one of his tattoos. And I was that's like, sick. that, that's awesome. You know, but then you sit there and you stare at it and you're like, okay, but how did he do that? Yeah, he's so sick. Yeah. Yeah, super, super nice guy, too. Uh, getting to hang out with him the past couple of years at Paradise has been awesome. Um, yeah, he is you know, nice. can't, can't. Oh, yeah, just a really nice guy. Very humble. So, uh, let's see. So, knowing that this is a tattoo-centric show, as I had mentioned before, if you had to pick one element of the tattoos and artwork that you create that you really try to stress and really try to focus on in every tattoo, what would it be and why? Um, I guess it, it depends on like um, what three years of my life we're talking about. But, you know, know. it's Fair like I, I focus hard on my weak points in tattooing. And so whenever I've like overcome a weak point, then I like zoom in on the next one and I'm like, all right, what are we going to do about this? You know, I think, uh, for the past maybe seven years, I'm definitely like, I always want good contrast and I always want to talk the client into that good contrast, um, <clears throat> and not let them steer away from it in any way. And that seems to work out great. Um, I've also focused on like how I do a lot of like little details. And whenever I'm coloring, I leave room for those little details. So, you know, like the whole obsession of like, how tight can I get it? I'm going to get it so fucking saturated and tight. You know, <laughs> it's just like those, it's your, the basic tattoo principles. And I'm like obsessed with those. And then I'm also like, all right, I want to do more chrome, you know. <laughs> well, who doesn't want to tattoo more chrome things? Yeah. Doesn't matter what it Where is. Where did it doesn't go? It, it's coming back. I, I'm it, I, I, You know, <laughs> I've seen a massive resurgence in all things chrome over the past, like, 10 years. It's been awesome. I'm like, trying to maybe... throw it into, like, little tattoos. like Or, like, whenever I'm working on the sleeve, I'm like, what can be chrome? <laughs> oh, earring? Yeah, we can do that in Chrome. Oh, oh yeah. yeah cool. But sometimes Maybe we'll it just give it like a Chrome people. choker, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people aren't as stoked. Luckily, my clients, I think I could convince most of them to add some Chrome. Yeah. The so, sword I'm working on is uh, I, I haven't done like this sounds weird, but I've only done like, uh, here, I'll just show you. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm trying shit. to figure out chrome in a straight line. 
and I haven't done a lot of that. It's normally curved. So I'm fucking right. with like what that might look like. I'll do this like probably like four times before I'm like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the way that we evolve with what we do and it's how we figure stuff out. You yeah. Know, you yeah, keep doing fun. it until it looks right to you. And then inevitably someone comes along and says, that's cool. But like, have you tried it like this? And then you're like, and, hey. And then it like changes your whole mindset on like, oh, crap. People well, do let that. Let me go back through and redo that. <laughs> well, I mean, I some of the like people I'll... I hang out with do. But... Yeah, that's true. The, the industry has changed. <laughs> it is. It is. And you know, <laughs> you're getting a lot more people that are getting out there and they're like, hey, listen, like, here's my input on here's how I draw uh you know snakes or here's how i would do scales to be more efficient at it or chrome or oh you're doing a dagger cool let me show you a little trick that i use whenever i draw them because like it's going to give you that like nice little like bevel kind of edge without really having to do a whole lot of work you know it's it, we're starting to see a lot more sharing of that information now for real you i know, remember which when I was younger, awesome. it was like you can't actually trust the information that they're telling you because they're trying to steer you in the worst direction. Oh man, I met a young tattooer the other day and she like uh, worked at one of those uh, types of shops where they're like more restrictive with information. And she was like, yeah, you know, like some people will put the stencil on with pine saw. And I was like, that's not pine saw, that's Dettol. And she was like, oh, I was told it was pine saw. And then I used it like when I was younger and I was like, they fuck with you. Like you have to understand this industry. They try to stop you from learning and you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt, whoever it is, unless you can fully trust them, you know, because right. now you're tattooing with pine saw, you know, yeah. <laughs> like just, that's all. It smells like pine saw. It looks like it's not, it's not. Pine saw. No, no, it is not. But yeah, I'm glad that people share things <laughs> at my shop. We're like always like, just goofing off, you know, we like love having each other around and shit, but. Which is all, that to me, that's the way a studio should be. You know, you should be yeah. able to be there and goof off and have fun with people. But at the same time, you should also be able to turn around and be like, Hey, you know, that trick you used on the last galaxy you tattooed. Can you go over that with me real quick? Yeah, we do that. We have skill yeah. shares almost once a month where That's each awesome. artist can teach whatever they want to the other artist. That's sweet. And we That's all show really up and sweet. we're all so stoked. We're like, oh my God, show me. Um, I taught like soldering, you know, so people <sighs> can fix their yeah. clip cords or lamps or whatever. And it was so fun because nobody's taught like them soldering before. And I'm like, oh, well, that's something I can take from you know, the a million years ago tattoo apprenticeship or whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, what, what were they soldering? Needles? Were they making their own needles? Because that would be awesome. No, I um, I took a clip cord and I cut it into multiple pieces and then was like, okay, we're going to repair this. So. Yeah. And here's how we're going to fix it. Yeah. And then when it works, everybody's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but does it work? Quick, turn it on. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> So, so yeah, that's a up, really good system in a tattoo shop to have oh, like, yeah. being able to have skill shares. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, having that kind of a community aspect to where you work can be super important too, because it makes you it makes everyone better. And then as everyone improves and everyone gets better, you know, the studio is just gonna get better and you know, yeah. everyone's gonna benefit from it. So it's it's always good to have that kind of an environment. And I've worked in places before where it was very much, you know, someone that didn't really know what they were talking about, that thought they knew what they were talking about, but Bro wasn't, science. yeah, but wasn't <laughs> humble enough to actually acknowledge the fact that they didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. Um, because, you know, well, I, you know, I've been doing this for so many years and blah, blah, blah. You've been doing it wrong for so yeah, many years. doesn't mean you're doing it's it right. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's like, congratulations on having a career of X number of years where you've been doing things wrong. Congratulations. Well, some people get into it and they're just into making money. They're not into growing. And they're like True. into making money and like feeling like a badass. 
<laughs> yeah. And th these are like the wrong reasons, maybe. I mean, yeah, it is fun to feel like a badass. We do put needles in people's skin and help yeah. them through their screaming pain. That's pretty fucking cool. But I mean, I don't think that should be like the main objective. <laughs> well, true, true. There are many <laughs> other fields where you can do that for a living. You can hurt people in lots of careers. Yeah, and they will pay you handsomely for it, too. <laughs> I don't want to hurt them. Yeah, I, I I, don't like it, but, you know, unfortunately, it's a side effect of doing a tattoo. So it's kind of the price you got to pay. Yeah. I don't mind the blood, and I don't like, you know, do you smell the plasma? I can smell plasma. It's like a... I, I got nothing. It's a weird yeah. smell. <laughs> but uh, that, I'll, I'm I'll like, take your I'm word like, I don't on really that. Mind that. Like, I don't really mind that I can smell their insides. <laughs> mm, yum. Mm, plasma. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that, I smell <laughs> lavender with an undertone of plasma? Is that. <laughs> Yes, that, that must be it. it it's, the, it's the subtle hint of green soap and plasma. You know? <laughs> I'm the like, what did you eat today? I think I can smell it in your blood. You had garlic last night, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> They're like, my breath. I'm like, no, your plasma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We have too much fun together. It's not really. <laughs> So how do you determine your typical color palette on any given tattoo? Because you do really bright, beautiful, colorful tattoos. How do you deter, how do you pick? I get all stoked on one color palette and I get obsessed with it for a certain amount of years and then I change it. Um, currently it is golden yellow, teal and orangey red. <laughs> And I've been putting it in, like, I've done an octopus tattoo that way. And, like, I, anytime I can use that color palette, I'm super into it. Um, but, yeah, it changes um, all the time. I mean, it, you know, give it, like, you know, five to seven years. I think I get stuck on a color palette. But, yeah. Cool. Everyone's got, like, a different way that they choose. You know, some people are mm -hmm. like... I don't use any blue in any of my tattoos. You know, I, I actually know an artist that's that way. I don't think they own any. If they own a blue, it's like a blue gray or a cool gray. What? But, but they blue don't... is so reliable. At least, I mean, the ones that I like, they're Trust so me. reliable. So when I was coming up in tattooing, I was always taught that like for people that have lighter skin tones, blue is the perfect contrasting color to it. Because, you know, we have a little bit of yellow in our skin. You oh, know, like if they're have pink and or orange and yellow and then you put the blue in. And the, like... Yeah, but blue is that natural complement to it. You know, yeah. it's going to contrast it the most. Any warmer skin. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. The warmer skin gets the greens and the blues. Fucking sick. It brings out both, you know. Right. Yeah. So it's like, like okay, that. cool. But, you know, talking to this guy, I was like, what do you mean? you don't own like a robin's egg blue what but he's you... right though because when people see that you're sticking to a color palette whenever they see your work they know it's you um so that's one of the reasons i think it's good to try to stick to a color palette as much as possible because then it's going to be so automatic that they look at the work and they go oh is that Haley adams yeah i knew right. that they don't know why they knew that sometimes you know but sometimes they know it's like, oh, it's just those colors, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just color and palette I know, can really, like, make a statement, you know? Absolutely. You know, it's one way that artists can differentiate themselves from other artists by using a very specific, unique color palette. You know, that's yeah. why I always like to ask that question because under, getting a deeper understanding of why do people use certain palettes over other palettes or why do they... Um, you know, stick to using only like, uh, you know, specific types of color schemes. Mm -hmm. You know, why do they do that? Is it because they're trying to create that signature look? Or is it, you know, for some other reason? Is it because those are just their favorite colors? Is it because, like you know, maybe they're color different? 
you know, maybe yeah. they can't see specific tones, so they never use them. So, oh yeah, Ty McEwen is colorblind. There's there's a couple of people out there that are either colorblind or color different um, that are phenomenal with color, but it's you would almost never know it by looking at the tattoos that they do until someone points out that like, oh yeah, you probably haven't ever seen them do this kind of a color scheme. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. they're like, oh. But there's, you know, I just always find it interesting to find out why people choose the colors that they do. Yeah, I did that seminar with the, uh, or I, you know, was learning at the seminar with Tony Moore, the comic book illustrator. Um, and his thing with color is evoking emotion and what he's trying to convey in the story. And that was a really good seminar. Um, but, you know, he's an illustrator. He is trying to tell a story with every image. And there's definitely information in that that we should take on as tattooers, you know? Like, we're also trying to tell a story in a lot of cases, you know? Well, there's... Um, so I got the the privilege to interview Gunner this past summer um, mm -hmm. before Paradise. And um, looking at some of the paintings that he's done in the past couple of years you can see that he's using the same kind of philosophy there. Um, and that was something yeah, that his really are tried very storytelling. Yeah. So, That's so yeah, cool. like I said, it's always a curiosity of mine and I know different people have different reasonings behind it. So it's something I always like to ask. Yeah. Um, do you prefer to work on large scale multi-session pieces or do you like some of the smaller, like one shot, <laughs> one and done? um you know kind of tattoos that you do um i think i like the larger stuff i mean that's what i get mostly is big pieces um so then it does make whenever i get a smaller piece exciting um because i'm like wow this is gonna be done in a couple sessions and we get to see it done Ooh. um but working on the big pieces are is really satisfying you know like you get to see like a whole arm complete you're like mm. it's it uh i think it took time for me in my career to like be able to like like fathom and like buckle down and get a sleeve done because i feel like it's like a oil painting like you could work on it forever you know it's like no absolutely not you gotta fucking go you know <laughs> You can cool. just like layer colors and like keep fucking with like the lighting and stuff. If if somebody like let me have their arm for like I don't know a few years, then the things we could build. <laughs> right. The imagine the amount of refinement <laughs> that you could create, the level of yeah. detail that you could achieve, and then mm -hmm. the layering capabilities, and then you'd be in you with could, like a single needle, like doing some weird shit. And you're like, did you see that detail over there? There's a whole fucking scenery in those sunglasses, like a real scenery. But you can't tell unless you look up close. It's all done in gray. Like <laughs> right, right. I feel like we're like you see this asteroid over here if you look at it in just the right way you can actually see nicholas cage's face you know? <laughs> exactly but it's only it's like only really, that big so you have to be really close to it <laughs> really it's a whole sleeve of nicholas cage's face but it I mean, looks like outer space <laughs> that 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 would be pretty cool the different stages of Nicolas Cage, you know. That would take years. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think it should be crowned by a picture of him from Con Air, though. Because that was yeah. one of my favorites growing up. Yep. Uh, Con Air. Oh, I like The Rock a lot. Yeah. That was that a good shit one, is good. That was a good I one. I like those weird green beads that they're uh, they're not allowed to let touch in the ground, so he puts it in his mouth. I'm always like, damn, I want one of those in my mouth. Those things look like all squishy. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but they like will explode you or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's um, that's a uh, uh, the what they're talking about the chemical that's supposed to be inside them. In all actuality, is some of the nastiest stuff that's ever been created by man. Damn. Um, yeah, I know it was real. I thought they made it up. No, it's completely real. Wow. Does it look that beautiful? 
I don't know. I honestly don't really want to find out either. Yeah, like, sure. I don't want to get anywhere near that stuff. Unless Sean Connery is around. I'm well, not if good. he's around, fine. Because I know I'll be cool, right? I mean, the man was not only James Bond for a number of years, but he has been all, he was in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So, I mean, the dude's going to live forever, even though I'm, I think he might have actually died already. But that's okay. We'll oh, bring shit. him back. Really? We'll bring him back. <laughs> I don't know. Is he? Is he dead? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I haven't I don't know. seen him in anything in a long time, but, you know. He's probably, like, being a grandpa somewhere. And, like, Which is awesome. Sean Connery, yeah. if you're watching, thank if you you're for watching. you have done for everyone. <laughs> I Not that I think you'll be watching this. this great. But, you know, if you do end up, maybe someone sends you this clip. I don't know. But you are an inspiration. <laughs> You're um, an inspiration to all of us, Ted. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The man is so versatile. <laughs> so what have been some of your biggest challenges that you have faced in the past in creating art or tattoos? And how have you overcome them? Oh, my God. Um, biggest challenges, mm, I can say my biggest challenge as a tattoo artist was like this one point, like 10 years into my career, I started having these panic attacks and that was fucking horrifying and figuring that out was like probably the hardest thing that I've gone through in my career, you know, like, cause it would be like performance anxiety, like, like maybe like uh it, like my hands would shake so i couldn't tattoo so i'd be like well what the fuck i guess my like life and career is over you know yeah. um but turns out it, we always say we'll do we'll do anything to make panic attacks or anxiety stop we'll do anything we say that um and normally that means like a new medication or something like that which i did get on propanolol and that was great for a while um, which is just a beta blocker. It doesn't make you feel high or anything. It's pretty tight. Um, but I wanted to be like off of it more. And the anything is exercising and meditation. That's the actual answer. But I will do so many things before I'm running. I will not run, you know? So it has to be, so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to end my life. Like, you know, I can't tattoo anymore. I do anything to stop it. And then when you find out, that if you run from your anxiety literally then it brings it down way low and then but that's like the one thing you don't want to do <laughs> like right. i don't want to go outside and run um yeah. and then there's also you can't be controlled by something you don't fear so if you're not scared of being anxious and shitting yourself in front of your client or just looking stupid if you're not scared of it it goes away that's fucking crazy. It's a yeah. mind fuck, you know? You're like, oh, now I'm not scared of you. Come on, bring on your worst. Made me like cry in front of someone and shake and fucking pass out. And then it, when it doesn't come, it's like kind of disappointing because you already gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I gave up. Make me do something weird. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> done you know you already gave up now you're not controlled by it so it like moves on to the next person to haunt i don't know it's like oh well, they're no fun anymore <laughs> yeah go like, you're here. not scared of me it's like i'm gonna make you shit yourself in front of your client you sure you're not scared and i'm like i'm ready to shit like <laughs> yeah. i had tacos yesterday i'm prepared yeah, fucking bring it and then it's like man fuck you like yeah. <laughs> it's, <out of> there. <laughs> it's weird but that, was, that like took a long time to figure out, and I it was fucking horrifying. I was like, "What am I gonna do? I'm just gonna like be a recluse or something." I don't know. Everybody, a lot of people go through that, so it's nice true. to talk about. Very true. Um, what would you say of say some of your current challenges are? Uh, being too excited about life and putting too many things on my plate. <laughs> I Guilty. Do that. Yeah, I'm just like, want to do everything, like everything. Um, I'm just, I'm so excited about like the tattoo shop and like the direction it's going and 
Um, I'm excited about my work. I'm excited about teaching these seminars coming up this year. Uh, I'm excited about the past uh, tattoo conference that I threw last year. The queer yeah, tattoo tell us conference. a little bit. Of, tell us a little bit about that. Plug it. That was amazing. Um, that is probably one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life because I feel like I had to like take thirty five thousand dollars or so and bet that I could pull it off to in a contract with the hotel, you know, and like we were only we didn't have money to start with. We were doing it like ticket sales or whatever. Um, like we're just like, we're just going to make it happen, you know. Um, so like signing a piece of paper that says if I fail, I'll owe the hotel thirty five thousand dollars was I'm like, what? How fucking cocky am I? <laughs> like, I right. think because after I signed, I was like, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I just really into gambling? I don't know. Um, well, we did great, and we sold more tickets than we thought we would, and we did um, seminars, multiple seminars every day, and it was a blast. And me and Leslie, who we were like partners on it, um, with uh, like the brain work, you know, um, she was like, you know what? this is scary we hope it goes well but if we change one person's life it's worth it right and i'm like yeah one person and i was like i kind of want three but you know and then we had um i don't know like 50 people uh, like a whole lot of fucking people were constantly coming up to us going you changed my fucking life man this is amazing like the inspiration you know like um because it was a tattoo conference that was all for queer and ally tattooers so a lot of like queer tattooers don't go to um, conferences because the intimidation factor is real. It's like, it's mostly straight dudes and you get some weird questions <laughs> about yourself or like maybe they also just disagree with your existence. I don't know. Um, it's scary to take chances in the world whenever you're like kind of like risking your life in some ways, right? It depends on which, which part of the america you're in in north carolina definitely you're risking your life you know <laughs> um so to like be able to be like hey come to this conference like it's like 100 percent. like it's not weird here <laughs> like 100 percent. or maybe the other way you can be as weird as you want here <laughs> like i don't know um like for sure everybody here accepts you and it's not going to be an issue and nobody's going to try to attack you you know, um, so that was like the space we were given or like we pulled together and it was also diverse, like with um, like more BIPOC people I've seen in a conference ever and with the teachers actually being diverse and the invites being diverse and stuff, you know, like I like wanted to see that really hard. We had a one of our seminars was. Um, like anti-racism and tattooing, which is something that I feel like should be pushed more often, obviously. You know, everyone needs to know about it. Even if you think you know about it, it'd be fun to know more about it, you know? Um, I think that's like one of the coolest things I've done in my life so far because of how fucking amazing it went. It felt like, like summer camp or something. And I was like under a lot of pressure and horrified and I had to do my least favorite thing ever. Right. Or it's like my most scary thing, which is uh, public speaking. But I've gotten good at it. I took like boot camp, public speaking boot camp and stuff, and I've like made it through and now I'm less scared. I'm just, yeah, crazy. That shit was cool as fuck. Yeah. Are you doing it again? I'd like to do it again, but. Um, Maybe like an every other year kind of thing. Yeah, it's years. a lot of work and I kind of want to do it with like more, we got a good amount of sponsors and we sold a lot of tickets and stuff, but I think I would like to do it with maybe a grant or do a fundraiser, a big fundraiser first, because um, it's horrifying to risk all of the money you have in your life. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a lot of work to put it together it took nine months i feel like it'll be faster this time because we like know how we did it last time um but like are we ready to be that stressed out again me and leslie were like you know 
giving every bit of ourselves to that in yeah. hopes that it would work out. So I know that the dedication is real and I know the payoff is high. Um, not financially, we broke even, but right, <laughs> right. which is what we wanted, which is our goal. And that's, we didn't try to, we didn't strive to get more than that. But um, we got our like hotels paid for and got paid for any like seminars we taught, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I would love to do it again. I think I want to do it every three years or maybe next year. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. Absolutely awesome. Obviously, if there's ever any way I can help, let me know. Oh, yeah. You um, can come fucking hang with us. This shit is so I mean, All right. Fun. Don't yeah. tempt me with a good time. I mean, oh, darn. <laughs> yeah. Shots. I think some people you know? are like, wait, am I allowed to go? And I'm like, uh, do you hate crime gay people? Do you like them? <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, no. I'm like, then come on, let's go. Yeah, then it's a good time. It's come on a, down. We're just like generally trying to make a safe space and like people who like accept fucking queer and trans people. They're like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's nice. Yeah, I know it's so fun. You should definitely come next time. Definitely. Well, I'm sure we'll keep in touch even after this. And I mean, worst case scenario, I'm going to see you at Paradise Gathering this year. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah, um, that'll be awesome. You know, but yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch and I'll have to plan that out for sure. And that's taking place in San Francisco? Uh, our next one we're going to do in San Francisco. This okay. time we did it in New Mexico because me and Leslie really needed a vacation. She's got family from there and stuff gotcha. and a bunch of homie hookups. Like the guy who uh, did Game of Thrones has a bookstore and theater there, and he let us use it for our seminars and stuff. And That's that was awesome. Sick. Um, yeah, the whole place was beautiful and amazing, and it was nice to be able to like um, support like a, a local indigenous hotel and all that. So it was like a good retreat, like wholesome as fuck. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so now I've got like one or two little personal questions for you. Um, do you travel often? Um, so I was really focused on this whole getting a tattoo shop in San Francisco thing that I had never traveled much in my life. But recently I went to, and I've obviously traveled around America a lot. Um, America's so big, you know, um, but recently I went to Barcelona and I got to see my favorite paint palette of those old Spanish paintings in real life and all of the beautiful architecture and stuff. And I'm so excited to travel more. I'm going to go to Ireland this year and Ireland's know, a maybe blast. Berlin. Yeah, I've never been. I gotta oh go my for God. a so I, in a castle. Oh, <laughs> lucky. So I went to Dublin a couple of years back and worked at the Dublin Tattoo Convention. Um, and that was an absolute blast. Um, everyone that I met over there was just so nice and friendly and welcoming. Uh, we I went and did a traditional Irish lock-in, which is basically, you know, you drink at a bar until, you know, it's time to close. And instead of actually closing, they just go up to the front door and lock the front door and shut the blinds. And then they're like, all right, keep going. Yeah. You know? And you can stay there until like six in the morning if you want. Right. And you, everyone's just getting hammered. And I think at one point, I think it was like four in the morning. Everyone was just so hammered <laughs> that we were, you know, People were outside smoking cigarettes, making noise and stuff. And it was a small corner pub, right, in a residential area. And people would go out on the their balconies from apartments and scream at us to shut the hell up that, you know, they had to go to work the next day in like four hours. And we were like, well, that gives you time to come and drink. Come on down. <laughs> you know, like. Um, so we, everything got broken up around four because we, we were just too far gone. Um, but it was a great time to really get to talk to a lot of the local people, really get a vibe for the environment of what it's like there. And it was mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Um, I even made some friends from other countries while I was there. I'm still friends with him to this day. He works out in Col Col 
Kuala Lumpur out in Malaysia. Um, super nice guy, super awesome tattooer. Um, but I met him at the Dublin show and we've just stayed in touch ever since. It was awesome. But that's kind of the culture that they try to promote. And it's the culture that they really want to see is that kind of, you know, very intimate, very kind of personal kind of collaborative tattoo scene. Um, so I just thought it was amazing. Uh, but everyone I met there was like, oh, you're you're from across the pond. Yeah, come come hang out with us. Tell us about what it's like there. Oh, um, that's sweet. And I'm like, yeah, it's the U.S. Like, yeah. Cool it is what it is, you know. And um, I love Barcelona, um, and they have like they have a lot of uh, skateboarding for one. Shred, that shit's awesome. I like to skate. Did um, not know but, that. Okay. Yeah, um, huge skateboard culture there, um, but also they. It was like you have to be real quiet out on the streets after a certain point, but you can party inside. But as soon as you walk outside, you have to be like. And if you, you talk a little bit, people are like, shh. You're like, that's <laughs> wild. But Sit in the whisper after 10 o'clock. <laughs> it, it was like, I liked experiencing it, but then I was also excited to come back to like San Francisco where people are rowdy. <laughs> like, I know in America we're loud and rowdy and stuff. And I'm like, I, I can respect that in other countries. And then like, um, come back home and be like, woo! <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but the Ireland, I mean, shit, that sounds fun. I'm in. <laughs> oh, it was, it was awesome. Um, absolutely awesome. I keep meaning to get in touch with a couple people I know that, uh, work at shows overseas, try to find out what I have to do to make that happen in the next couple of years. Cause I'd love to go over. I would love to get accepted in, into and work at the Paris show. Um, Ooh, my life's it. goal is to work at Gods of Ink, the Mickey Violetto show. Uh, that's like my life's goal right Sick. now You're gonna to get it. good enough to actually be accepted into that show. And like, you know, and then once that happens, it's like, okay, I got accepted in. Now I need to be good enough that I can take home like best of show or tattoo of the day or something like that from that show. Right. Yeah. So it's these like super high goals I set for myself, but they're all international goals, you know? Um, so, you know, it's something I started focusing on about 10 years ago was cool. Like, yeah, the U S is great and it's huge. It's awesome. But like, there's a world out there with a lot more people in it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, oh man, like if most of the world's population exists outside of the U S <laughs> statistically speaking, I can tattoo more people in the rest of the world. And then maybe <laughs> if they have money, they can fly out and get tattooed by me in the U S that'd be cool too. Um, yeah, you know, you it. build those client relationships, you, you spark it up with someone. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, hey, guess what? I'm going to be in, you know, Philadelphia in a couple of months. You got time to squeeze me in for a tattoo? Absolutely. I will make the room for you. You know, if I have to move people around, I will make sure you get in because that's kind of the, you know, the business yeah, model nice. that I like to have. Um, and that's, I want to tattoo people from everywhere and hear their stories and like, what it's like because that, like it's a very that. different experience well you in do in the u.s in absolutely san francisco, people um visit san francisco as this um it's the beacon for um uh, like lgbtq right people i met people from like the middle east and um you know like berlin and all around the world and even like uh appalachian mountains you know like places that you can't be as open. Um, so we get to tattoo all those people from around the world and hear their stories. Um, awesome. I think that whenever I was a kid, we moved like every year and sometimes less and whatever, um, that the instability of that, that is, it made me like crave a home, like a place where I could like just be and like build this life and have all these wonderful friends and like know that I'm not going to move. Um, 
is really satisfying to me. But I love traveling. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so happy to have like roots in a place where I can be like, yeah, this is home. Like I've right. got buds here. Yeah. Right. I'm not going anywhere. You know? <laughs> oh no, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> um so second to last question, and then I'll let you go because I know you're probably super busy. Um, but if you had to give one piece of advice to any new budding artist out there, what would it be? <sighs> new. Uh, okay. Do your bloodborne pathogens and don't disrespect like people's skin. Like, wait, do stuff on fake skin until you think that you're ready to do a solid piece on your friend. Um, practicing on actual humans they say they don't care at the time and they say they want a free tattoo right then and they say when they're young that they don't mind that it's a little gritty but how many people I've met who won't wear tank tops anymore who won't wear short sleeve shirts who always cover that area of their skin because they grew out of that like oh I don't care if it's bad or good or whatever I just want a tattoo um is a real fucking thing so have some respect for people's skin and you know learn to do what you want to do pretty decent before you start putting it on people's bodies that would be great because my cover-ups they pay the bills for me i love doing them and i love changing people's lives but it also be great if they didn't have to go 10 years without wearing fucking shorts <laughs> you know <laughs> um very solid very good advice absolutely uh and thank you for that because that it rings true on a whole bunch of different levels so yeah. that's that's awesome be um, good to people you're like uh, oh yeah. well, they just wanted it they wanted a cheap that of course they want to cheap that too they're fucking 22 years old like and they probably don't have a lot of money and everyone wants to get a lot of tattoos but i mean come do a on. cheap good tattoo can you do I, that That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Practice. Mm -hmm. We have fake skin now. Whenever I was an apprentice, we didn't have fake skin. We had pig skin. So yeah. you're getting off easy. You don't got to smell that shit. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> that stuff is wild. You got to yeah. shave its weird coarse hair. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> Sorry. It's it already has a memories. tattoo from the music. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so final question for you. Uh, and then I'll let you go. But what truths have you found that are simple, but not easy about, you know, technique, process, the industry, life in general? Um, simple, but not easy truths. Um, the truth is that nothing is actually scary and life is just a stupid video game. So if you need to call your landlord to get your sink fixed, you should just call them. <laughs> but like for everything though, like it's just like, well, why can't you do that? Like, just do it. There's no like amount of experience or something that you're supposed to have as an adult before you're allowed to go after your fucking dreams or make your life less stressful or like confront your problems healthily, you know, like just... Just treat it like a video game. Like, I don't know. Even like eating food is like, oh, I need energy. Blah, blah, blah. And then now what? Oh, I'm going to try to complete this quest of, uh, for me, owning a tattoo shop or um, creating the best possible work environment that I can. How do I do that? Here are the steps. Let's go. You know, <laughs> break everything into small pieces, make it possible, set high goals for yourself. Awesome. awesome. Sounds simple, right? Right. right? It sounds simple. It ain't easy. Right? <laughs> very, very profound. Thank you for if, that. If something's overwhelming, break it into small pieces. You can fucking do it. Yes, you can. It's like it the old, uh, reminds me of the old saying, um, you know, how did a guy walk a thousand miles? One step at a time. Mm-hmm. It's the truth. I think some people are waiting till they're not scared. Yeah. But 
that's kind of the whole thing is uh do it scared always do it scared it doesn't yeah. fucking matter that's the difference you'll just be more proud of yourself you're not gonna just be unscared call your landlord true. fix your seat <laughs> <laughs> Do it scared. Yep, right. Like <laughs> See this Haley Adams quote. Call your landlord. Fix your sink. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's so, awesome. like, with your shitty boyfriend or girlfriend. Like, just do it. It's scary. Just do it. What about your whole life? Uh like <laughs> yeah. truth. <laughs> do it scared. Cool. Well, tell us how we can get in touch with you if we want to book an appointment or, uh, you know, check out some of your work. How would we get a hold of you? How would we see your stuff? Um, so Haley Adams Tattoos is where my book now button is. Also, my Instagram, H Adams Tattoo. Uh, both of them have a book now button. You just put in your little consult form and we do it. Um, also, any messages are welcome. Awesome. Awesome. And, and the shop is Castro Tattoo in San Francisco in the historical LGBTQ district of San Francisco. It's awesome. It's fun to be there and check out. And if you've never seen it before, you should see it. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you for your time today. Uh, you don't have to head out right away. I'm just going to kind of shut down the stream. But thank you for your time today and thank you for jumping on here. Uh, can't wait to see you at Paradise Gathering this year. It's going to yeah. be an absolute blast. Uh, don't be surprised if I hit you up a few times before then. Just kick it with you and you know, yeah. pick your brain about a few things. But uh, thank you very, very much for taking the time out to do this today. Really, thank you, really Jason. Appreciate it. Uh, you're more I than welcome. You. And uh, we do this show every Monday uh, at noon. So if you want to jump on and work on some drawings, work on some flash, chit chat about life, anything like that, you're always more than welcome to jump in. Um, I'll actually, I send out a, I usually send out a group text every Monday with like the link to join uh, to a whole bunch of different people. So I'll just throw you into the group chat and, you know, that way you'll start getting spammed by me every Monday at like 11, like, yo, here's the link for today. Don't know if any That's of you guys awesome. are going to join, but here you go. I'm in. Um, yeah. That it's a good great. time. Good people. You know, sometimes we get other people in. I, I think there's uh, one or two other interviews scheduled in the next few weeks. But, um, you know, obviously I'll, I'll let you know about that in advance so that you're not like, oh, hey, how's it going? I'm working on a drawing. What's up, guys? Oh, this is not a drawing day. Hmm. Uh, but. You know, if you feel like jumping into those too, you're more, always more than welcome. So, uh, but thank you very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Everyone go check out Haley Adams, HaleyAdamsTattoo.com, correct? Awesome. Yeah. And Castro Tattoos. And so. thanks for everybody who responded and like watched today. Um, and thank you for Creatures Cra Cave and mm -hmm. Paulina. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And I hope everyone keeps their hands busy and has a great day today. And I will catch everyone next Monday at noon for the next episode of Skill Building Mondays with me, Jason Leeser. Until then, keep those hands busy and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>